Hi, my name is Clara Pasika and this is The She World, where we meet extraordinary women doing extraordinary things. Hi everybody. When it comes to fun and games, Laura James, our guest this week, the founder of Mulberry Media Interactive and Games Children's Play, isn't playing around. Her app, Together Time, helps parents bond with their children through play and was runner-up in the 2013 Best App Ever Awards. She's a Tech Woman Canada alumni and advocates for girls, especially her 16-year-old daughter, to enter STEM programs at Science, Technology, Engineering and Math. Welcome, Laura. Well, thanks so much for being on the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So I guess to start off with, um, for those of us who might not be at all familiar with uh, your field, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what it is you do? Sure. I'm actually a web producer mm -hmm. um, and, that, and mobile as well, so a mobile and web producer. And essentially, if you think of all of the traditional media, like television, radio, and music, and other forms of media, um, it's, it's essentially the same. It starts with an idea, and mm -hmm. then you go and you reach out and you try and find all of the pieces that, that you could put together to make that idea a reality. Cool, and are you working with a specific company that you're doing this with? Um, it's, it's my company, actually, okay. Mulberry Media Interactive, and uh, currently the main focus is on a product called gameschildrenplay.com, uh, and what we're doing, basically, uh, I, I had realized that uh, we're really losing so many of the songs and rhymes and games, and you know those hand clapping yeah. games with Mary <laughs> Mac kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. So we're losing those uh, traditional songs, and, and, uh, and I'm scouring the world to basically archive all of them and have them all in one place. Every culture, every, every language, so itsy bitsy spider in German, Spanish, and French. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So if someone was thinking about going into this type of field, are there um, specific sort of personality traits or characteristics that someone would need to, to pursue this career? You know, there's, again, like other media, there's something for everyone. There's always a piece of the puzzle that's, that, that you could fit yourself into that you'd like to do, whether it's writing or the graphic design elements or the programming. But programming in particular is something I find that, that women especially hold themselves back from, from mm. getting into, and there's no reason for it. Uh, and it, it, it sort of worries me, actually. And so mm. um, I actually uh, found, found throughout uh, my own journey I love programming. I had no idea that I would, but I, I'm learning to program myself simply because I want my stories told. Right, right. Having your, your stories told, I think that um, when we think of this type of field, we do still see it, I think, as really uh, male, male dominated. Um, and uh, why do you think that that's the case? <gasps> oh my goodness. You know, some of the top, top, top women in our industry. Um, like the CEO of Yahoo, Marissa mm -hmm. Mayer. Um, she was one of the first 20 people hired by Google and helped mm -hmm. it grow. And she doesn't necessarily, I mean, n none of us have the answer. Um, but I think one of the main things is just women see it as a geeky boy thing mm. to do. And so they just don't, they don't feel themselves identifying with that persona. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you actually touch code, when you actually get into it, um, I, I do think too that they think it's restrictive because they feel that they're not uh, mathematical, let's say. Mm, okay. And though there is some logic attached to programming, it's actually a language. Mm. It's, it's like speaking French in order to order a great meal at a French <laughs> restaurant in Paris. You have to speak the language of the computer to get it to do exactly what it is you want it to do. And as soon as you have learned that language, it's like anything else, you just have to put in the hours to understand it and you'll thrive in that, in that chosen profession as a, as a woman or a man. Right, That's, I've never heard someone sort of phrase it that way. Um, why do you think that it's, it's important to, to have women um, developers for, for apps and, and web? Yeah, well, take my, uh, my story for example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to, to find a programmer who's interested in hand clapping games and songs and rhymes for parents is not an easy thing necessarily. <laughs> they're, you know, they're interested in first person shooter games. Right. So, um, and not all of them. I mean, these of are course. stereotypes, obviously. But uh, essentially, if women don't get into programming, then women's stories won't be told in the same way that before women were singing, uh, you know, or taking a larger role in, in the music industry, in the film industry. Um, in any media, actually. And I really hope that women understand sooner rather than later that we have to take hold of this medium 
quickly before it is primarily dominated by men. Mm. Yeah, it's really interesting. Because it's still new is, I guess, what I'm getting yeah, at. It's, yeah, yeah. it's relatively new, but everything will be on the web, everything. And we don't, we really would love to see uh, a 50-50 split of, of what content we're able to access. Mm -hmm. So you think it's actually about the content that's, that's going to be developed for Absolutely. the larger... Absolutely. The yeah. women's stories need to be heard, and mm -hmm. the best way to get those heard is if, is, is if you can hands-on create it yourself and program. So if someone did want to you know, start creating uh, things themselves, um, are there different um, training programs or certain degrees that you would recommend if this was a field that a young girl was interested in getting into? Yeah, you know what? You need your physics. You need to sort of lock down all of those things to keep your options open right? to take a computer software engineering type thing if that's mm -hmm. the direction you want to go. But even prior to that or during or uh, if, you, if you don't want to necessarily take that route full time, I still think it's important. There's so many resources out there right now. There's Skillshare. There's Code mm -hmm. Academy. There's a place called Treehouse. There's Lynda.com. Um, there's so many places where you can pay fifteen dollars wow. and take a ten-week course. That's or that's that's crazy. The Code Academy and Treehouse are are absolutely free. So you and you also have so many resources to just uh, you know like Facebook type of communities where you can just reach out and say, hey, I'm trying to build this website and I'm stuck. Can you help me? So you're never alone when you're attached to this world of programmers. They, they all help you through, and they particularly want to help young people and young women mm. get through it because everyone knows that there's a gap that needs to be filled. Mm -hmm. um, so the specific app that you designed, mm -hmm. um, how did that process of designing a, an app work? Take me through, um, you know, did you design it? Did you, how did you bring people on board? How does that work? You know, actually what happened was uh, I actually helped launch uh, a television network here called Treehouse. Oh, Treehouse TV. And uh, while, uh, while I was there, I met some terrific talent, obviously, in the, in the preschool education space. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I had, um, had left the television industry and taken a digital postgrad. And while that was happening, I, the iPad was launched. So mm -hmm. the iPhone was, was out a couple of years earlier, and so we knew what that could do. But then when the iPad came out, I realized I had all of these DVD series in my head, in the back drawer of my filing cabinet, mm -hmm. and in the back drawer of my head, um, waiting to be produced. And one of them was um, this teaching parents how to interact and how to bond with their children better through these songs and rhymes called finger plays, like mm -hmm. It's a Bitsy Spider. And so when the iPad came out, it was just a ding. It was like mm -hmm. a eureka moment. And um, so essentially we just, we took that and, uh, and I knew exactly what I wanted to see. I, I, I got a really fabulous children's entertainer named Kathy Reed Naiman. She's wonderful. It was about a four month process, but okay. it starts with brainstorming and drawing it out and what is the content and what, where do we want it and how do we want it to look and what's the color palette and how many, um, how many do we want parents to go through and do they get it for free and do they pay and mm -hmm. all of these, these decisions mm -hmm. are they're just one decision after another and then working with the programmer and the, and the creative, other creative people to sort of make it happen. Great. So you have the app here. Can I you, do. Can you show it to us? I certainly can. It's called uh, Together Time with Song and Rhyme for Parent and Preschooler Play, but we just call it Together Time <laughs> um, for short. But essentially it's very, very simple. Um, it's in the record stage at the moment for some reason, but uh, it shows parents, um, it's, it's, it's made to be kid friendly, <laughs> so that, well, it's made to be kid friendly <laughs> because children love to watch these things obviously and they love to do them at school. But when parents want to learn it, they don't necessarily have access to the same resources that a childcare worker does. And so Kathy just gives them a really very simple uh, little tutorial, tutorial sort of, of, of how to do it. And so, and then if you don't have um, the ones that you like here, you just record your own. So I can record you. Sing a song, sing a song. A B C D A B. There you go. So there you are, and then you're you basically you just label it and. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's very simple. It's How very simple, and parents fantastic. do love it. That's what started it all, and so now we're reaching out to get, as I say, world domination and get every <laughs> uh, every song, every rhyme, every game, every story. Amazing. So many things are being lost, and we just want to make sure they're archived and that parents have access to them, with the touch of a finger. That's absolutely amazing. Mm. Oh, and that sound means that uh, that's all the time we actually have for our interview today, because that sound means it's challenge time. 
Let's see what we've got this week. Clara, your challenge is to write code with a text editor to build your first web page. Oh boy. Seriously, guys? Okay. Okay, so what do I do? Okay, so HTML is basically a descriptive language. It basically tells the, the web what to describe oh, okay. on, on a web page. Okay. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It basically is a language for describing web pages. That's all you need to do. So as I mentioned, you basically have things called tags and all of the information within tags is what's actually gonna help you get your web page up on the web. Easy, right? So all you have to do is look between the tags, the um, I think I, I think you mentioned earlier that it's the between the between the arrows exactly. So there's arrows at the top and then there's arrows at the bottom, with, but with a slash. So okay. beginning tags and end tags. You're going to use the head tag for describing to the internet what it is that it should be reading in the background. But everything that goes in the body tag, there's a head and a body. In the body tag, you're going to actually write your information. It's really easy. Okay, you ready? Here, I'm going to help you. One, two, three. So you make your website, and of course, if you haven't made a website before, as I mentioned. If okay. you're new to programming, you have to say hello world because the world needs to know that you're new okay. and, that, and that you're actually reaching out to them. You ready? Yeah. Okay, go. Where do I write? What I, I where do I write hello world? Is okay, well just use your H1 tag. H1. Mm -hmm. H1. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh my God, I found you it. You got it. Okay. 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 <laughs> Let's see what we got. All right. Going to the internet. How do I? What do I do? What do I do? I press. How do I save? What? Uh, Command S will save. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then do what do I do? Go to go to your web browser. Okay. And refresh. Oh my God! <laughs> I did it. Mm -hmm. Hello Let's world. see. I told you it was easy. Wow. Now you have 7 billion people that could potentially see that page. <laughs> I in guess the world. I do. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And that took like a minute to learn. Exactly. And in maybe a year, you might be able to make your own web page, wow. a very complicated one. Wow. Mm. Well, I guess that's why you're the pro. Thanks for being on our show. I'm Clara Pasika, and you've been watching The She World. Thanks to our amazing guest, Laura, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember, be extraordinary. I dare you.